What's up people, my name is Dario and welcome to my first YouTube video. In front of me I have my mid-2015 MacBook Pro 15 inch and like the majority of MacBooks it's suffering from bad thermals which makes it run pretty hot impacting its performance. So that's why after almost two years of using this laptop I decided to fix the issue by cleaning my laptop internals and by reapplying the thermal paste on both the CPU and also the GPU. I just want to give a small disclaimer before we get into the details as the results that I will show you in this video may apply only to my specific situation. You might not achieve exactly the same results but I am sure that it will definitely make a difference. To perform this repair you will need a couple of things. First of all you will need a special screwdriver to unscrew the backplate of the MacBook. I use a toolkit that I bought from Amazon for 36 euros which is about 42 dollars. This toolkit has all the equipment needed for any kind of tech repair that you could perform at home. If you don't need all of these tools you can buy only two screwdrivers needed for this repair. And of course the thermal paste. I will be using the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut as it provides excellent thermal conductivity performance. Please bear in mind that this thermal paste is a bit on the expensive side as for the 1 gram kit that I'm using here I paid 8 euros which is approximately 9.5 dollars. For all the tools that I used in this video I will leave an Amazon link in the description below. Ok so let's get right into it. First let me show you the current thermals on my MacBook so that we have some base readings to benchmark after we perform the cleanup and the thermal paste replacement. As you can see, even while performing basic actions like browsing the web, my MacBook immediately shoots to the high 60s to mid 70s. Now let's see how it performs under a more consistent heavy load. To demonstrate this, I will use some sample 3 minute 4K footage and export it in Final Cut Pro. As you can see, in the beginning of the export, while the chip still has reasonable temperatures, I'm getting good CPU performance, but just after a couple of seconds, the temperature ramps up to the high 80s and my CPU clocks down to a miserable 0.8 GHz. Under these conditions, it took 6 minutes to export the 4K footage. Let's try to fix this. First, Unscrew all the screws from the backplate. Please make sure to separate the screws as the two indicated in blue are shorter 2.3 mm screws. After you unscrewed all the screws, you want to pull the backplate gently upwards by gripping it near the clutch cover. And what do we have here? A gigantic pile of dust. This is how the inside of my MacBook looks like after two years of use. To be honest, I was expecting dust, but definitely not in this amount. Now, before we touch anything, we want to make sure that the battery is disconnected so that we can work freely on the motherboard. First, peel off the sticker cover from the battery contactor. After that, take a plastic tool and gently lift each side of the battery connector. Now that we have disconnected the battery, we can start working on removing the heatsink. First, make sure to peel off the rubber covers located in front of the fans and bend them outside the laptop chassis. Now what we need to do is to remove the small rubber cap from the screw at the end of the heatsink. We can now start unscrewing the heatsink. First, unscrew the screws on each end of the heatsink and make sure to separate them as there are different sizes. Now, unscrew the screws from the GPU heatsink bracket by unscrewing the four screws that hold it. After that, unscrew two screws from the CPU heatsink bracket, one located on each side. But be careful when unscrewing them as when you come to the end, the spring on the other side will make the screw pop up. 
Now you can gently lift the heatsink. It should come off without any problems. As you can see, the old thermal paste is completely dry, so actually no wonder that my MacBook did not get cooled as it should have. Now take a piece of fiber cloth, or in my case kitchen paper, and use isopropyl alcohol to clean the dry thermal paste. Additionally, you can make use of cotton swabs to clean the old thermal paste around the tight spots of the CPU. Of course, repeat the same procedure on the GPU. Also, don't forget to clean the heatsink as well. Now that the CPU and GPU are sparkling clean, let's get rid of the dust. I used a soft cleaning brush and carefully brushed away the internals of the laptop. Now that everything is clean, we can apply the new thermal paste. As I said, I'm using the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut as it delivers high thermal conductivity performance. I will apply it by adding a pea-sized amount of the thermal paste in the middle of the CPU and GPU. I did apply a bit more, but that won't hurt. But please, don't go too crazy here and add the paste in reasonable amounts. Now, all we need to do is slowly lower the heatsink on the CPU and GPU while keeping an eye out for the screw mounting holes. After you lower it, give it a small wiggle, just so that the thermal paste spreads a bit. Now we can start mounting everything back together. First the CPU, then the GPU, and then the screws on the end of the heatsink. Please make sure not to over tighten any of the screws. We also need to stick back the rubber covers located in front of the fans. And of course reconnect the battery. Now we need to put back the back cover. Please make sure to press it in the middle so that you can hear the clips fall in place. And screw back in place the backplate screws. Let's start up again Final Cut and export the same 4K video and see how the MacBook performs now. As you can see the CPU turbo boosted to 3.2 GHz and we are again reaching high temperatures. But if you take a closer look at the CPU speed you will see that we now have a much more stable and higher frequency hovering from 2.4 to 2.6 GHz compared to the 0.8 to 1 GHz from before. This time the same 4K video exported in 2 minutes and 52 seconds compared to the 6 minutes that we had in the beginning meaning that we actually doubled the performance and exported the video 2 times faster. So in total I got twice the performance for a repair that only costed 8 euros which is about 9 dollars if I ignore the expense of buying the overkill toolset to perform the repair. Additionally, my MacBook is now running much cooler and is more quiet when performing regular tasks such as browsing the internet, writing documents and etc. While idling, the temperature is hovering between 44 to 45 degrees. If you have a device that is older than one year, and if your thermals are running high, I would highly recommend you to do this simple repair. This will definitely help your MacBook perform more consistent and it can potentially also increase the device's lifespan as the chips are running on lower temperatures. Thank you guys so much for watching my first YouTube video. I really hope this video helped you. If it did, please hit the like button as that will be a good indicator for me that I did a decent job here. For you that are wondering, I just started filming and editing videos and if you have any feedback or suggestions, please leave a comment below. I will definitely make use of that feedback to additionally improve my videos. My ambition with this channel is to focus on technology and digital trends that are surrounding us in our everyday lives. Once again, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Take care.